This is big. More than a month after Starship Flight 7, SpaceX has finally revealed the root cause of Ship 33's dramatic explosion. For the first time, they've used the term harmonic response. But what does it mean? And why did it trigger such a powerful, unexpected reaction? Buckle up, because today on TechMap, we're breaking it all down. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. SpaceX has completed its investigation into the explosion during the Starship Flight 7 test flight. The flight, which took place on January 16th, was partially successful, with the Super Heavy successfully recovered, but the upper stage suffered an anomaly and disintegrated over the Atlantic Ocean. The investigation identified a stronger harmonic reaction in the propulsion system than seen in previous tests as the primary cause, which caused excessive stress propellant leaks and fires, leading to the ship's destruction. The most probable root cause for the loss of ship was identified as a harmonic response several times stronger in flight than had been seen during testing, which led to increased stress on hardware in the propulsion system. The subsequent propellant leaks exceeded the venting capability of the ship's attic area and resulted in sustained fires. So what does it mean? Okay, let's break it down. According to my findings, a harmonic response refers to the steady-state reaction of a system, like a spacecraft's propulsion system, to a cyclic or sinusoidal, wave-like, load or vibration that occurs at a specific frequency. In engineering and physics, it describes how a structure or component oscillates when subjected to forces that vary sinusoidally over time such as vibrations from engines or other mechanical systems. In the case of SpaceX's Starship, the harmonic response several times stronger in flight than had been seen during testing suggests that the propulsion system experienced unexpected and intense vibrations or oscillations during Flight 7. These vibrations were likely caused by the interaction of the rocket's engines, structure, or other components resonating at a particular frequency leading to amplified stress on the hardware. The increased stress from these vibrations led to propellant leaks in the propulsion system, which overwhelmed the ship's venting capabilities and caused sustained fires, ultimately resulting in the loss of the spacecraft. The attic, SpaceX explained in the post, is an unpressurized area in the aft section of the ship that lies between the bottom of the liquid oxygen tank and the heat shield. This aligns with the initial post-flight finding that indicates a fire developed in the aft section of the ship, leading to a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Shortly after the flight, Elon Musk said this was from an oxygen-slash-fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. On the recap, we can see this propellant leaking is visible. The fires eventually caused all but one of Starship's engines to execute controlled shutdown sequences and ultimately led to a loss of communication with the ship. Loss of contact occurred about 8.5 minutes into Flight 7. The ship's flight termination system triggered autonomously a few minutes later, as it is designed to do in such situations, causing the ship to break apart. SpaceX stated in its update that it has implemented measures to reduce the likelihood of a similar incident occurring on future Starship missions. First, it conducted a 60-second static fire engine test with the ship vehicle that will fly on the 8th Starship flight. The 60-second firing was used to test multiple engine thrust levels and three separate hardware configurations in the Raptor vacuum engine feed lines to recreate and address the harmonic response seen during Flight 7. Findings from the static fire informed hardware changes to the fuel feed lines to vacuum engines, adjustments to propellant temperatures, and a new operating thrust target that will be used on the upcoming flight test. To address flammability potential in the attic section on Starship, additional vents and a new purge system utilizing gaseous nitrogen are being added to the current generation of ships to make the area more robust to propellant leakage. 
Future upgrades to Starship will introduce the Raptor 3 engine, reducing the attic volume and eliminating the majority of joints that can leak into this volume. Beyond that, the same day after the flight, Elon Musk, via X, gave some solutions including double-checking for leaks, adding fire suppression to the vulnerable area, and probably increasing the vent area. Hopefully all goes well with Ship 34. Now let's all wish S-34 and the upcoming Flight 8 all the best by saying Flight 8 Go in the comments section below. It can be said that SpaceX's information transparency action is highly appreciated by the space community. This is in contrast to Blue Origin, which still has given no details about the loss of the first stage of New Glenn. New Glenn's debut launch took place on the same day as Starship Flight 7, which witnessed the second stage reach its final orbit, but the booster was lost during descent. Unlike SpaceX, however, Blue Origin has kept much of the root cause of the problem under wraps, saying only that it was due to a combination of issues with the engine and control systems. This explains why, although Starship has flown seven times, each flight attracts huge attention from the public, and the upcoming flight is not exceptional. At the time of editing, Starship Flight 8 is scheduled for no earlier than Friday, February 28th. The test will deploy four Starlink satellite simulators, mock-ups of next-generation satellites, on a suborbital trajectory, expected to burn up upon re-entry marking a step toward satellite deployment capabilities. For years, SpaceX and Starlink have mutually contributed to each other's success. Nearly two years ago, Elon Musk expressed concerns about Starlink's future if the larger version two satellites couldn't be launched soon using Starship. To address this, SpaceX introduced version two mini satellites, which, given Starlink's financial success and strong cash flow, likely resolved the issue. Despite this adjustment, SpaceX remains committed to transitioning Starlink missions to Starship. The rocket's significantly larger payload capacity and fully reusable design are expected to enhance its competitiveness, eventually making it widespread enough to phase out the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. SpaceX is gearing up to introduce the third generation of Starlink satellites which will weigh approximately 1,900 kilograms, significantly heavier than the 575 kilogram version two mini satellites. These version three satellites will feature a wingspan of about 60 meters when fully deployed, expanding from a base of seven to eight meters, allowing for larger antennas and solar panels. Each satellite is expected to support an uplink capacity of 160 gigabits per second and a downlink capacity of one terabit per second, drastically improving Starlink's overall network performance. A single Starship launch carrying version three satellites is projected to add 60 terabit per second of capacity to the Starlink network, over 20 times the capacity of a Falcon 9 launched version two mini mission, and with the potential to launch over 100 version three satellites at once, this could provide a combined downlink capacity of 100 terabit per second. Additionally, these satellites will feature nearly four terabits per second of combined RF and laser backhaul capacity, essential for inter-satellite communication. They will also incorporate SpaceX's next generation advancements in computing, modems, beamforming, and switching, optimizing both performance and efficiency. Positioned at a lower orbit of 350 kilometers, version three satellites aim to achieve ultra-low latency of around five milliseconds, further enhancing Starlink's capabilities. To support this ambitious expansion, SpaceX filed a request with the Federal Communications Commission in late 2024 to deploy up to 29,988 satellites with approval expected soon. In reality, as of late February 2025, SpaceX sent more than 8,000 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. In 2025, a total of 376 Starlink satellites have launched. In addition to the objective of Starlink deployment, Flight 8 will also test the Super Heavy Booster's return to launch site capabilities and a Raptor engine relight in space, 
advancing SpaceX's goal of fully reusable rocket systems for missions to the Moon and Mars. This return to the launch site maneuver involves a powered descent, where the booster reignites a subset of its 33 Raptor engines to slow its descent and guide it back to the launch tower, potentially for a catch by the launch tower's mechanical arms, known as Mechazilla. This catch landing method was successfully demonstrated in Flight 5 on October 2024, where the Super Heavy booster was caught mid-air by the tower's arms, marking a significant milestone in reusability. The Super Heavy booster is powered by 33 Raptor 2 engines, which use cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, methalox, as propellants. During return to the launch site, the booster typically shuts down most engines after the initial ascent, retaining a few, usually three center engines, for the boost back burn and landing burn. This reduces fuel consumption while ensuring precise control during descent. The booster uses its grid fins for aerodynamic steering during atmospheric re-entry and descent, navigating high-speed, high-stress conditions to target the launch pad accurately. The launch tower, equipped with two massive mechanical arms, is designed to catch the booster by engaging with small protruding bars on the booster's grid fins, stabilizing it for rapid refurbishment and reuse. Return to the launch site requires precise navigation, robust thermal protection to withstand re-entry heat, and reliable engine performance under varying conditions. The stainless steel construction of the Super Heavy booster, chosen for its durability, heat resistance and low cost, supports these demands. Successfully returning and catching the Super Heavy booster at the launch site minimizes turnaround time and reduces the need for new booster production lowering launch costs significantly. This aligns with SpaceX's vision of making spaceflight as routine and affordable as air travel, a critical step for frequent missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Flight 8 will test the relighting of a single Raptor engine in the vacuum of space while the Starship upper stage is in orbit. This capability is essential for extending the operational flexibility of Starship allowing it to perform maneuvers such as orbital adjustments, deorbit burns, or in-space propulsion for deep space missions. Raptor's ability to relight in space demonstrates the engine's robustness under cryogenic conditions and zero-gravity environments, where propellant management, such as preventing sloshing or boil-off, is challenging. Flight 6 was the first flight to include an in-space burn of a single Raptor engine, However, Flight 8's relight test will further validate the engine's performance for extended missions, including those requiring multiple burns, for example, lunar or Martian landings and ascents. Relighting a cryogenic engine in space requires precise control of propellant flow, ignition timing, and thermal management to prevent ice formation or pressure anomalies. SpaceX has refined the Raptor engine's design using Raptor 2 versions with improved durability and performance to handle these conditions.